What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and welcome back once again to the Nerd Castle for another series that we're going to run through, Song Fua, Tales of Werewolves, Tome 1, which implies that it's the beginning of a new series, but it's a game that I don't have a ton of experience with, but I am very interested in playing. It's a game in which you place traps and try and defend your homestead from encroaching werewolves and other creatures of the night. Now, the game takes place and is in fact unique because of its setting. It's set in the 1850s in Canada, which is something that I've never actually been exposed to, and it's really interesting to see the lore and mythology of another group of my fellow American continentals looked at and actually given some attention. It's the same reason that I like Expeditions Conquistadors, because it's a time period that and a location that doesn't really get explored too much in video gaming. So before I prattle on too long at the mouth, let's go ahead and start a new game up here. We get to choose our character, so you get to select a hero, and you get to choose between Joe and Jack. Now, Joe is a burly muscle man, a lumberjack with a crazy emo hat who is just amazing at running around beating things to death. He's ultra muscular and he's the normal difficulty. He's amazing at melee, he's good at shooting, his traps are perfectly fine. Basically, he is all around great. The other character is Jack, who while looking badass with his little beard tassels is not so good at anything, and he's like playing the game on hard mode, which is I think is what we're gonna do since I have played a big chunk of the game as Joe, and it hasn't been incredibly difficult, although there have been times that are pretty challenging. I think we're gonna go with Jack on this one, just cause I think it'll make for much more interesting gameplay. And so there we are, when you click on a character it's gonna give you their brief background. The difference between the two characters, they're brothers, but he was a freedom fighter, Jack was, and that's basically he became a hermit after after his war or whatever and with Joe he's actually just a lumberjack who was a cripple as a child but then he had a magic spell put on him so that he got all beef caked out and just ran around like wrestling bears to the ground and choking them out and so I'm gonna go with Jack so there we go. I don't know how much time we're gonna have I'm gonna try and get a couple days worth done we're gonna have to overwrite stuff here I'm gonna name this let's play just like the previous profile I did try and get one of these going earlier on but I wasn't super happy with the results and I wanted to bring you guys the best thing that I possibly could so here we are on our calendar 1858 in December. The calendar was apparently patented on May 1803. Somebody had the lowdown on that one. How badass do you have to be to patent dates? Jeez. Anyways, we're going to start out on the 5th of December. And by clicking the square, it's going to start the story lineup. So I'm going to shut up now, and you're going to get a little bit of background. Oh, you're going to get a loading screen first with a derpy looking wolf in the bottom right corner. He's like, <laughs> That, that, that wolf does not look threatening at all. He actually looks like he has just had way too much to drink. He looks like he's in a pretty good mood. Before every mission, it lets you know what you're going to be up against and gives you uh, recommended traps. But uh, for now, let's just jump straight into the storyline, and I'll kind of explain the different critters as we go along. Chapter 1, Exile and Reunion, December 5th, 1858. As I live and breathe, if it isn't my little sister, Josephine, what good wind blows you to the deepest, darkest forest? To see your hermit brother. More like a storm, I'm afraid. The parish priest went crazy and jumped me like a demon when I was dusting the sacristy. I tried to fend him off with a candelabra, but a candle fell on the floor and the church caught fire. Ever since, the whole parish of Woolsvale says it's my fault. That's just crazy! Doesn't make any sense at all. But hey, don't just stand there like you're holding up the doorpost. The thing is, you see, Jacques. I'm not alone. Don't worry. It wasn't my day to come here, brother. Without Joseph to protect me, the villagers would have torn me to pieces in the village square. He can't live there anymore either. Please, Jacques, for the love of our mother, let bygones be bygones and let us both stay here with you. Did you hear that? Sounds like a wolverine's outside spooking our horses. You two make yourselves at home. I'll try to get rid of it. And Josie, don't feel obliged to finish my whiskey. Alright, so it should drop us into the game now. Yep, there it is. And so, every night we go out to defend our home, and that's how the game basically runs. And so, because of the setting, as a child, some of my biggest heroes were Davy Crockett, Daniel Boone, you know, Jed Strong Smith, and so forth. I really like games about pioneers. For whatever reason, it's a really attractive time in history for me. I just really like it. Bloody hell. Horses are dead. And it's gotta be a wolf, not a wolverine. The pack must not be far. Honestly, if we had a wolverine on our hands, I might be a... Well, I don't know. Wolves versus wolverines is tough. Wolverines are weird little... They're, they're bad little bastards. I mean, they're not as bad as badgers. 
But anyways, the game is controlled with the WASD keys. You left click to do your normal melee attack with your axe, and you right click once your axe is glowing and has like a fiery, basically it looks like your axe has completely and totally taken part in Bean Taco Night, because the whole back end is just spewing flames everywhere. And so once that happens, you right click and it'll do a super attack. We can hold down the shift key to sprint at the bottom center. You can see our stamina bar. When that runs out, we will be depleted for a time, and we will run around like weaklings. The to Wolves Vale is burning. With our only way out of the woods blocked, I won't be able to get rid of my brother for a while. For whatever reason, the bro their brothers don't really like each other that much. I haven't really gone into it too much in the storyline. The game is really tutorial heavy. What you'll find is that the actual like first couple hours of the game are just an enormous tutorial. Oh, and we're about to get jumped from behind. That's the worst type of jumped. That's the prison version of jumped. So we got one wolf down, and it's bean time. Yeah, oh, we missed. I missed. What a failure. And so at the bottom left, there's some more HUD elements. I wasted my Taco Knight attack, unfortunately. You'll see our gun, our ammunition. There's a big heart, which is how much health we have. Alright, let's go save Phidias. This is a time period when people had cool names, but as I was saying, in the bottom left you can see a big heart that depletes. I don't have a clicker, so I can't show it to you. Right next to our portrait, and I'll talk about the fear meter in just a moment after we get out of this next cutscene. For now, it wants to teach us how to use our gun, and so we're going to hold down the control key and we'll use our musket. We can speed up the rate at which we load our musket and get the ramrod taken care of by right-clicking, just mashing on the right-click as quickly as possible. I nailed him right in the head, so that should be a kill. What you'll see is at the bottom left, there will be a 17 and a 20 with a wolf's head next to it. That's the fear gauge. That's how afraid of us the wolves are. As we damage wolves and kill them, you actually get a deficit between the bottom number and the top. When the top number matches the bottom, the wolves will attack you again, but it gives you a few seconds during which you can breathe. The good lord has sent you. Without your help, I would have been devoured like a rabbit. Hard to miss you, Miller. Think they heard you all the way to Quebec City. Be careful. There's a pack of rabid wolves around here. How many? Dozens. Hundreds, maybe. They even blocked the road to my mill in the east. Go see by yourself if you want. As for me, I'm gonna run and hole up at the W. Hood Company. Alright, so as I was saying, there will be a deficit between the top and the bottom numbers. So let's say you have 16 on top and 20 on the bottom. That means you have 4 seconds to get your stamina back and to reload your gun before the wolves will actually come at you. Before we go into this next combat, I'm going to go ahead and load my rifle. I love the fact that we have a raccoon hat. I, I'm not a fan of raccoons. They killed my dog when I was a kid. Like a pack of raccoons just jumped him and ripped his throat out. And so I've never been a fan of raccoons. They're just an animal that I absolutely just have a distaste for. I just don't like them. Don't like them at all. And so it's going to try and smash us with another tutorial there, but I'm going to veto it. No tutorials here, sir. At least not until we get to the point where I don't know what I'm doing. And headshot. Let's see if we've got enough time to reload. I doubt it, though. We've only got one second till the next attack. Yep, there it is. Got ourselves omnom. So let's beat that wolf down real fast, and we'll give him a power attack. And that one, we've got two seconds, so you'll see it's 18 and 20. We've got two seconds, basically, until he comes at us, bro. Wolfy bro. And so, we'll go ahead and knock him down. You do want to take full advantage of the third attack in your combo. It's a knockback, and that works on even big mobs. And so, you do want to take advantage of that to kind of give yourself a little bit of ground, if need be. It wants us to secure the mill's bridge now, so we're going to sprint over there and take care of that. I wish I had a coat like that. That coat is pretty badass. That looks like a coat that a prominent man would wear. A prominent man with manly facial hair. So let's see what's going on over here at the bridge. Oh, another tutorial! Sneak attack! And it wants us to... Now we're going to mess around with the shout command. And so what we can do is we can shout... And what the shout does, and because they were out of range it didn't work, but the shout can be used as a lure for your enemies, and additionally it can be used to increase your fear meter and buy you a little bit of... Oh, we're tired out. I ran out of stamina, unfortunately. And let's do a little bit of damage there. Oh, and we're still taking damage. I am just not doing so well in this case. So let's see if we can take them out. Luckily the wolves carry their lunch money around with them in their furry little pockets. And so we do get a little bit of change for taking them out, which we can spend on traps and on new equipment later on in the future. Jack! Our sister is taking up the long lost art of levitation. So we should probably go back and check on them. And so if I remember correctly, it's going to teleport us here. 
And so now we, yeah, we're back at the camp. Let me go ahead and reload my rifle. Oh, I know what it's going to do right now. So at the bottom right, you'll see that we have a kind of, it's basically the same thing you would see in an MMO. It's just like a toolbar. You can press the one through eight keys and it'll do different abilities. We've got some whiskey on us. And so we're going to get nice and shit faced because it makes us enraged. It makes us deal more damage. You also see that on the right side of the screen, there's a picture of our house and it's got a health bar underneath it. That's actually how long we have until we fail the mission. The house is what we're trying to protect. Apparently the wolves in this region have a healthy respect for engineering. They are well studied on how to take apart log cabins and they do it quite proficiently. We can press the space bar to do a little dive roll out of the way, although I found that carefully timed sprinting tends to work a little better and cost less in the long run. Now the wolves do work in tandem sometimes and it can be a little frustrating to get an attack off. The game very clearly wants you to focus on using traps. Unfortunately at this point we don't have any so I'm just going to focus on a power attack there. Hit him with the taco knight. From now on that's we're going to hit him with the taco knight. That's what we're going to name our special attack. It's going to be the braver to our cloud strife and that's going to be the first mission up and out of the way. And so after every little mission, it's going to give us a sort of butcher's bill. We earn a little bit of money for each mob we kill. They speak to me. I hear them. But especially I, I see. I see the beasts. They were sent by the devil. What happened? I don't know. She started shaking like a crazy person. Then she let out an awful scream and fell to the ground. I never should have let you stay here. You just bring bad luck. There was nothing I could do, I tell you. Go get Dr. Lamontang. I don't know what happened. The bridge to Wolves Vale was burned down. We'll have to wait till morning. Alright, so since we're secluded in our house and our sister seems to be possessed by any number of evil and or beneficial spirits, we only know what's coming next. And so we're going to go down here to Derpy Wolf and click continue, and it's probably going to stick you with some more storyline. Chapter 2, Desires and Regrets, December 6th, 1858. My lord, forgive me. I was overcome with desire. What have I done? What have I done? You're only a man, LCR. Who's there? Who are you? But you just now invited me. When you tried to attack your servant Josephine after she'd refused your advances, I thought we had some affinities. But when you let the fire spread in your church after Josephine hit you with the candelabra, when you accused her in front of all the villagers of the crime that you had in fact committed, that was when I knew we were going to do great things together. <laughs> and that is what brings me here to make an offer you can't possibly refuse concerning your lovely and inaccessible servant. Why does the devil always look like he's just, like, playing in a ragtime band, like Blind Boy Fuller or something? Anyways, this is going to be our first exposure. I would never trust anybody with facial hair that sinister. And our sister's floating, and the voiceover has apparently decided not to work. It just says, I see them. The beasts want to carry me back to their master, and they'll attack tonight. I feel the presence of a werewolf. And so on we go. It's going to give us another tutorial, which I'm going to fully ignore, because I will explain things to you guys as we go along. And it says, now that we know where the beasts are going to attack from, we'll set traps to help us tonight. And so this map is going to be what you do during every single day period before the nightfall. We're going to take traps and we're going to place them right where the game tells us to right now because we don't really have an option. And so those are wolf traps. What wolf traps do is they basically are just your basic bear trap. When you step on them, they've got those crazy little jaw things, like the heads of those things from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, those little robots that ran around in the sewers and would, like, chomp through things. They were really hard to kill in the arcade game, but they look like the heads of those, and they clip the ankle of anything that steps on them. It's exactly what it is. They do a lot of damage to certain mobs, but we have to talent them, and otherwise they don't really do much to the bigger mobs. And so there is a talent tree. You do get XP as you succeed. You spend money on some of these traps. They do cost AP. If you look at this bar, this right here, it decreases as we place traps. These ones we're putting down right now, or the game is forcing us to put down, are rock traps or rockfall traps, or net traps, I think is what the game calls them. Hanging nets, that's what it is. 
It's just a net with a bunch of rocks on it. And once the mobs are underneath it, you shoot it with your rifle and all the rocks fall on them. Now, it does distribute the damage between the mobs evenly. So if you get a bunch of really powerful mobs underneath it, this trap is completely worthless. You want to drop it on singular mobs if they're strong, and you want to drop it on a bunch of mobs if they're weak. And so it is kind of specific in its uses. So there's nothing else to do during the daytime here, so we're just going to pass it and start the evening. It's also got a little clicker for how much money we have. That'll play into some of the more advanced tactics later on. You get traps that are really powerful, but they start to cost a little bit of cash and so out we sally in order to face our foes with our crazy woodsman's axe we're kind of getting some ridiculous fairy tale action going on here coming out well i guess it, I, it makes sense that's how we got rid of the big bad wolf right just gutted him with an axe now before the animals show up you do have about eight seconds or so to set yourself up in a position that is advantageous that wolf's gonna eat a trap that wolf's gonna eat a trap and then we're going to get a little bit of leeway. Well, one second anyways. I do really like the soundtrack of this game. I'm a big fan of American folk music and also like Irish folk music. Because I do have an Irish side of my family. And so I've always enjoyed things like the wolf tones and things of that nature. Flogging Molly and so forth. And just all manner, the Dubliners. Things like that. And so the music of this game I find to be really attractive. Even though this comes from a... French Canadian background I believe but still it's got lots of violins and things it's all very chipper it makes me want to do the dance of my people if I had a dance that went to violins I don't know it's mostly just me waving my arms and going Aah! and so we're gonna go to the waypoint here and see if we can bait something else into our trap Detection. oh yes okay and so what we can do is we can lure things under our net with our shout so if I shout you'll see that it places that red mark on the ground everything on the mini map that was with in range is going to come to that spot which means we can effectively bait things into our trap and kill them now later on we will be able to leave meat under the traps as well because there is a really really long cooldown on our shout with the net trap here you'll see that little number on top that's how many mobs are underneath it and how many are going to be damaged by it that worked out pretty well in our favor and so let's go back and see if we can set this up for the other mob and so we've got ourselves a Taco Knight all charged up. And there are other attacks. You can actually charge up multiple levels of this once you get further in and gain some levels. You can actually get like three or four stacks of your rage and do different attacks. Now we have a big guy coming in, a werewolf. And you can see him on the mini-map in the top left. He's the yellow dot. The red spotted ring that's around our character is the range at which our shout will work. And the green ring around our little character there is going to be the sight range that things can see us at. Now, later on, we are going to have to deal with our smell, too. Apparently, we have quite a poignant smell. Or a quite a... I guess we have quite an aroma. We have quite a piquant smell, I guess, that just kind of flies out about our pits. And it alerts the wolves to our presence, and we'll have to be careful about that later. Oh, let me bait this guy. Hold on. There we go. And I'm about to sprint out of range real fast. And so as soon as he's underneath there, and you'll see he's a werewolf, so that actually didn't affect him that much. And he's going to come straight after us. The nice thing about those is you can knock them back with your axe, and they're worth a ton of cash, too. 30 cents back then was no slouch. That was a stack of guat back in the 1800s, so... There it is. That's level two that we've knocked out. I don't know if we're going to have time for a level three. I don't really know how long that's going to run. We'll look at our butcher's bill here. We got ourselves a good, oh, 65 XP or so. And 66 cents for our troubles. Not a bad day's wage for that time period. We've also leveled up and hit level two. And we've got the stamp of success with the crazy calligraphy S. Because everybody knows that when you use calligraphy, you're either a vampire or you've done very, very well. And so let's click continue and be on our way. In this next mission, we're going to have to deal with Grand Wolves, which are basically wolves that like to sit around drinking brandy and saying, mm, quiet. But they're a little bit more badass than the other wolves. And so I think the game says something about in lore, they have to be like eight. I mean, eight years old. Chapter three, Resentment and Damnation. I think that is what it said, and it's December 7th. We're going to skip that as well because it's just going to talk about the action points that I told you already. We also have access to a new ability. And the logging company has opened up a new path inside of our property. And so the game does have hints, and it's actually kind of sideways about it, and I'll explain that. It's just like Devil May Cry, like if you suck too much at the game, the game will actually tell you you suck. And so like this little thing will pop up and be like, do you want some help, buddy? And for me, I was just insulted by it the first time I saw it. I was like, no, I can do it myself. And then I flip my apple juice all over the table. But anyways, this level we have to deal with two waves. And so what we're going to do is we are going to see these cards. These are going to tell us how many mobs are coming and from where. They also tell us here in the corner what wave they're part of, and here in this corner they tell us what location they're going to. This one is going to the chicken coop. 
this one is going to the house. And so what we're going to do is if you click on them, it'll actually show you the path, which is pretty sweet. I think what I'm going to let these do is I'm just going to let them charge the chicken coop over here. And we'll see how that goes. And then we're going to deal with this guy down here. Now this guy is going to be dealt with with a simple net trap, I think. And so we'll throw a net trap right there. You can zoom in a little bit just to make sure the positioning is correct. The net trap has to be connected on all four sides by rope. It's a little bit, it can be finicky at times. Your traps also don't hold, like they don't hold over in between levels, which is a little annoying because they do cost you action points. Some of them cost you money. I do wish they stayed in place until you actually had a chance to use them. There's not a whole lot of room for improvisation in the game, but you can try. I mean, you can go for it. I think I'm just going to let them do their thing because honestly, I just... I don't see them doing that much damage to the chicken farm. So if we want to see what's coming with wave two, we'll click over here. And it looks like we've got five wolves that are all going towards the house. Now we have access to a new trap. It's called the bonfire. We can place it. And what the bonfire does is it makes it so our fear meter is constantly overcharged. It makes it so nothing can come inside the radius of the fire as long as it's a wolf. So anything that's afraid of the wolves won't come inside here. The other thing we might consider doing is setting ourselves up yikes if I could pull this off it would be pretty sweet but I just don't see it working so I think what I'll do is I'll just go for the for the bonfire here and we can light this when we run up to it by hitting the E key and we'll just deal with all these wolves we do have some grand wolves which is a little unfortunate but as long as this fire is in place they shouldn't bother us too much on later days we'll be able to spend this AP if we don't spend it on traps and so that's why I'm so conservative with my AP at the time being because it's practice for the future. And so with those limited traps, I think we'll be okay. So let's start the night. And we can't go to town yet. Before we go out, it's going to give us the opportunity to go through our inventory. We have a little bit of, I think this is whiskey. Let's see here. Get rid of all those. It's oud de vey. I don't know how to say that, so I probably butchered that, but it's alcohol. It's, oh yeah, you distill blueberries. That actually sounds pretty amazing. It burns the throat of the heaviest drinkers, but it gives us all our health back. We've also got a talent point to spend, so we're going to do that down here. I think what I'm going to go with first is... Let's go with... Yikes. You do want to be careful how you spend here, because your character is going to develop a very specific tool set as you go further and further along so you want to plan it out a little better and right now there are a lot of useful things I'm gonna go with marksmanship though because we're gonna to have to buy that one at some point anyway so why not take it now that's been confirmed we'll go back to our inventory and we'll say to start the evening so that we can get this third night knocked out in this first episode I really do want to get out of the basic My tutorials found them. all three of them they've cornered them in a cabin east of the village now you have to sign this document for me by signing this, you are giving custody to all the souls of the villagers. When night falls, they will possess the beasts of the forest and transform them into werewolves that will carry out all of our orders. <laughs> out of the question. Sign. I signed under duress. I will never consent to your vile demands. Quiet, you whiner, and think of the pleasures you'll enjoy when our werewolves bring you back to the woman you desire. Also, how would you like to be appointed a cardinal in Rome? Rome? You said Rome? That is my fondest dream. There is a there is a vague point to be raised here. How did the priest come to control the souls like legally? Like I think a lawyer could make a good case here that he doesn't really own all the souls that he just gave away. But let's get ourselves into position. And it's also interesting that they said we're wolves, which could, are completely different than their wolves or our wolves. It's we're wolves. What are you? We're wolves. But let's bait this first werewolf. We'll bait him in. And he's going to run underneath our net. We're going to slaughter him. And then we'll go deal with the other wolves, which I think should come running the second they hear this gunshot. We'll see what happens here. Did they hear it? Oh, they didn't. But we should be able to gut him fairly quickly. And down he goes. Give me your 30 cents. It's like wifing in the club. But give me 30 cents instead of give me $20. Now we'll run up over here. And they're going to do a little bit of damage to our chicken coop. But it's okay. Chicken coops aren't that vast or well put together so it should be fine we've been spotted and so I'm actually gonna see if I can bum rush one of these first before the other one shows up and we did and so we've got a taco night all charged up and the second they get close enough uh, taco night 
you have to yell Taco Night when you do it. It's all part of the plan. And so that's the first wave down. The second wave, now at any time during this little charge period, we can press the tab key and take a look and kind of gather ourselves for the plan ahead. That's right, I think we were just going to regroup around the bonfire there. We're going to have ourselves a merry campfire and just ignore the wolfy death that awaits us outside its borders. And so that should give us the opportunity to take some pot shots at the wolves since they can't actually physically come within range of the fire. And so I think I can get a reload off before they actually no I can't never mind we'll light the fire and there it goes and so they should back off now and you'll see down at the bottom we've got about 15 seconds to play with and so I'm gonna see how many of them I can wheedle off here down he goes that was a headshot eh, it said it was a headshot and it still didn't kill him I'm gonna focus on the stronger wolves first because I just don't want them around Unfortunately, because they're great wolves, they're really, really good at their wolfy duties. We actually can't kill them with normal bullets. You need silver bullets. Or, in the worst case scenario, you can get yourself some of the super sweet blessed bullets from the priests in town. And it should help you keep yourself kind of wolf proof. I mean, not completely wolf proof, but for now, hopefully, oh god, they're everywhere. And we may end up getting consumed here. This is not looking so good. It may have been in my best interest to plan a little better. Let's see what we can do. Oh, I don't have my shout yet. So we'll take him out. Oh, God. All right, I'm going to drink my alcohol here. Get myself nice and skunked so that I can't feel what's going on. You're not being consumed by wolves. You're just really, really drunk. Go to sleep, Jack. You're drunk. And actually, Jack is a lot more fragile. This is my first time playing as Jack. And I can tell you he is quite fragile by comparison to Joe, who seems to have a lot more HP. I can tell we're definitely going to have to rely much, much more on our traps with this guy. So I'll take that into account for further levels because that did not go according to plan at all. Yikes. All right, but we do get to pose after every mission because the pose you take after you beat the hell out of a bunch of werewolves is equally important. I mean, look at this guy. This is a man who is resolved. He has res he has a complete and total resolution for what's about to happen. We've leveled up again. We've earned ourselves what looks like 92 cents. And so calligraphy again, and that's going to be it for this level. So ending December 7th, I think this is a good place to stop. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle. I'm happy you decided to stop by. We will be continuing this series. I can't guarantee what success we're going to have, but I'm going to try my damnedest to be a badass as I play through this one. So that all out of the way. I'll see you guys next time, and take care out there, everybody.